Monday, Tuesday, happy day, happy, ha, ha. Good morning, sun. Good morning, moon. Good morning, stuff. Cat sitting on my dresser. Wow, it's a beautiful morning today. And you know why it's a beautiful morning today? Well, because in the last video, I just happened to mention that 68% of the beautiful people of the internet were not subscribed who were watching my videos. And you know what happened? So many of those lovely, beautiful people of the internet decided to hit that little free red button. And well, that just made my day. You know what? I would love to see what percent of people watching are subscribed now. I mean, after all, it's just a free little red button that costs them nothing and helps me immensely. Oh, let's check. I mean, surely it must be at least 40 or 50 percent of people watching are subscribed now. After last video, all those lovely people hit that button. Let's take a look-see, shall we? Ah, okay, what do we have here? Watch time for subscribers. Ah! 24.3%? Only 24.3% of you watching are actually subscribed? Huh? What, what am I gonna do? How can I convince these 75.2% of people enjoying the content I put my blood, sweat, and tears into to hit a free little red button? Yeah, and it, I, don't, I don't know what to do. Just finished that workout with a claw. Couldn't unbend my hand for the whole last bike. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, beautiful people of the internet. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to another video. Yo, <laughs> be sure, scroll down, hit that button for me. Like, what's really good? Ah, I'm just kidding. That's, that's, that. I had some fun with that. We're going to roll right into the topic of today's video. Even though I'm so sore, and I still can barely close my hands, I did the toe to bar and bar muscle things you guys saw earlier, and, like, this claw got stuck, and, like, to the point where I had to, like, do this to, like, open it up after every set. It was the craziest thing, and I'm sure you guys can relate, but, well, I'm looking like Monica from the episode of Friends where they go to the... All right, I don't want to alarm anybody. But Monica's hair is twice as big as it was when we landed. <laughs> okay, when I go places with high humidity, it gets a little extra body, okay? We're gonna roll into the topic, and that is athletes moving and shaking, specifically my homegirl, Amanda Barnhart, and my homeboy, Samuel Quad, headed down to Boston. 
Comp Chain Athletes, longtime Comp Chain Athletes, Amanda coming off dual seventh place finishes at the games both in 2019 and 2020. And the homeboy Samuel Laquant breaking into the upper echelon of the fitness world, placing second at this year's 2020 CrossFit Games. They're making moves. They're making moves. They're moving and they're shaking. Now, it's conveniently interesting that they're doing it at the same time. It makes me think that maybe there's a push from Bergeron on the Comp Chain camp to really build a hub. To this point, they've had Katrin and Tori Dyson as two of their bigger athletes on location at all times. It's going to be interesting to see what they do next, whether they're trying to bring out more athletes and create a hub, kind of like what I think Proven is doing, or if this is just a happenstance timing situation where both Amanda and Sam finally decided to pull the trigger. The main motivations I'm assuming behind this, although I haven't heard directly from either athlete, is that they need they need the push. They want the push. They feel like they've hit this point where they're ready to take another step. You know, for Sam, it's potentially making it to the very tip top of that podium after a second place finish this year. And Amanda, it's finally cracking that podium. Amanda has had podium potential since she started in the sport. She is an amazing athlete, super powerful, really well-rounded. And I think with a good amount of coaching and push in the off season, she'll be able to make that jump. It's decently significant for both of them. As I know, having visited both their homes, they train alone typically, or at least not with any other super high level competition. Amanda has had weekend trips to go train with Chris Yermo and Drew Wayman and people of that nature but it's not super consistent and Sam trains alone with his family so not alone but alone <laughs> without any other top athletes a couple teen athletes he's had to push from but neither of them are not only having another high level games athlete right there all the time but the oversight of a coach I think is something that's really missing too Sam has always been coached from afar Amanda did have a coach working at the gym she was training at in Ohio I think what's gonna happen now is they're both gonna be under the tutelage of Ben himself or whichever of the substance coaches at CrossFit New England that will watch them and coach them every single day now having spoken to athletes you know personally and gone and trained with them and, and listened to them a lot of athletes that aren't around their coach wish to be a lot of athletes coming close to the games like Valner's a great example will often travel out to Montreal to spend a month with Michelle because there's a lot of value to having your coach right there it takes a lot of pressure off you when you're reading your programming as we all know sometimes you have questions you're like hey what's the intention of this whatever For people like you and me it's probably not a big deal if you guess the wrong thing and you do the wrong movement or the wrong rep scheme. It's not really a big deal. For these thoroughbreds, for these top level cream of the crop athletes, it makes a big difference to have that exact precision of what the coach had in mind be executed and corrected in live real time. It's one thing to be able to enter notes in your phone, another to have your coach right there talking to you, telling you what to do and taking all that pressure off so you can just focus on pushing in your training. Now, obviously Amanda is just stepping right into the lion's den here with Captain David's daughter, another top level CrossFit Games athlete that's be right beside her and assumingly pushing her day in and day out in workouts. I've heard mixed things from athletes whether they like this or D or not because you definitely can't be competing every day but I'm sure it's going to be nice to have that push when she needs it. I'm going to assume that it's probably going to be a sometimes they train right beside each other sometimes they don't and their programming likely won't be identical either but I think it's going to be a massive thing even just support morally to have someone at that level there with you all the time. Catherine is a very experienced athlete in the sport. She has a few more years under her belt than Amanda does so I think that's going to be a big plus for Amanda. Sam, on the other hand, he's not going to have a direct male competitor staying there beside him. However, he is obviously going to have two of the greatest female athletes in the sport to push off of. And as we've seen from Matt and Tia, you don't necessarily have to have someone on the same side of the competition to you pushing against. You can have someone on the opposite side that's still going to give you just as much of a push and you'll reap just as many benefits. This is definitely a massive step for CompTrain as well, having two of their bigger name athletes with them, ideally at their gym at all times or at gyms affiliated around them. It's it's going to be a hub. It's going to be a hub that's not only going to attract more people to their camps and things of that nature, draw more attention to the brand, but it's also going to potentially help them develop these athletes to bigger and better things which again will probably draw in more up and coming athletes wanting to have the same process to then excel themselves. So good for you, CompTrain, Ben, that's awesome. Really excited to see what you guys develop there. Maybe they're starting a little competition with Proven for the biggest current hub of individual athletes. We'll have to wait and see. Next on the list is Sarah Sigmund's daughter. She's definitely one that we've all been kind of waiting to hear from. Obviously she's had a couple years that maybe didn't exactly go her way. Obviously this past year with the unfortunate injury. And now moving forward to 2021, Morning Chalk Up released a statement just letting us know that 
that she is in fact looking for a coach to program for 2021 season, which I think is a good move. You know, I think she is one of those athletes that we've all seen do really, really well, but just not quite get to that top of podium, even though we all know she has potential. Sarah is one of the most consistent dominant athletes in the sport historically. And I would love just like many of you probably would as well to see her really reach that top of her potential and hit the top of that podium because I believe she does have the ability to do so. Getting a coach and program that's gonna really work for her is a massive thing that I think she's gonna be focusing on for this year. Maybe that means making a move away from Iceland to go somewhere like a comp train or a proven. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of comments in the videos from you guys talking about and speculating that Sarah might be going down to join the proven team. Obviously, that would be really, really amazing to see. They would have, without a doubt, the most dominant hub of athletes at that point, but it's hard to speculate at this point. You know, there's so many variables that go into an athlete's decision deciding which coach Coach to have. It's definitely not just, hey, who's coaching the most top level athletes? There's a lot of individual stuff, relationship stuff, trust that has to go into these decisions. So it's, it's impossible to speculate where we think Sarah's going, but it's definitely a topic I'm going to keep my eyes on and I will keep covering for you guys because I think there's a lot there. It'll be really interesting to see how it develops. 2021 as a year is going to be also just immensely interesting. You know, I, I'm excited to be able to see this stuff unfold and, and to cover it for you guys because it's a year of unknowns. If 2020 was a year of we really don't know what's coming next, 20 2021 is definitely a more optimistic version of it, but we still don't know what's coming next. There's still so many uncertainties surrounding the pandemics and whether we're going to have in-person sanctional semifinals, whatever you want to call them, whether the games is going to be able to happen, you know, with a crowd or not. And what's these athlete seasons going to look like? Obviously we have Fraser who's saying he's still unsure if he's even going to compete based on the season structure. And these athletes moving around and making these changes are at least proactively optimistic to the season. They're saying, Hey, look, we're going to put these things in place. We're going to hope for the best. and We're going to make the best of the situation whatever it ends up being. So I'm going to follow that same suit. I'm definitely very excited to see how the season unfolds. Hoping we get a chance to travel around a little bit. I can see some athletes. I can see some of you guys at some competitions. Let's see how it all goes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today's video. Be sure to scroll down, hit that subscribe button for me. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Take it easy, fam. Peace.